Welcome back to Deep Thoughts with Sammy C. The famous Keyshawn Johnson says there are too many germ spreaders in the sports media world. Well, I refuse to be a germ spreader and I choose to be a joy spreader. I'm excited to announce my new interview segment called Joy Spreading. I'm your host, Sam Adams, and the goal of this show is to provide platforms. Not twisted, not self-serving, not biased platforms, just platforms. And we'll be producing interesting and meaningful content because I understand that asking people the same boring questions is only gonna get you the same boring answers. And with that, I'm excited to announce our very first guest, former USC quarterback, former Pitt quarterback, and current pregame and postgame analyst for your USC Trojans, Max Brown. Thanks for having me. <laughs> Thanks for being here. Yeah, yeah. Super excited. So uh, you had your first day of work as a pregame and postgame mm -hmm. announcer this past Saturday. How did that go? Well, well, we're just talking off air in terms of uh, like pregame was awesome. Yeah. As Christmas could be. Then the 1 a.m. postgame uh, show got to me a little bit. Uh, some unexpected things had to break down, yeah. but uh, all in all, it was a good good first experience. Awesome. I also had a monumental uh, game day experience. So as you can tell by the name of the show, I'm a big Keyshawn Johnson fan. I saw him coming into the stadium. Love it. I did too. Th then I yeah. stopped him and got a photo with him. Perfect. And then I went to CVS, developed the photo, and Ooh, framed it. There you go. So right here, um, I now forever have this. And I'll never forget Jeff Ellinger's class, sitting in front row. He was our guest for that class. And uh, he goes like going on a tangent, talking about the yeah. team. It was the fall, and he goes like, I don't know why we keep recruiting these kids like Max Brown and like these pocket passers. Like we need dual threat quarterbacks, and like kept going. And like Felzer knew I was in the class and was like, Yo, 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 and like tried to like respectfully do it. But sure enough, like everyone's looking at me like, What the heck? But it was like a super, and he had no idea. Yeah, he was just talking big picture. So like no. No offense taken, but it was a funny moment. No yeah. way. Well, that is a perfect transition into our first segment. So speaking of kind of sports media and the germ spreading, what is the worst interview question that you have ever been asked? Yeah, you get some, some dumb questions once in a while. Like, yeah. How'd it feel like throwing that interception? And it's like, all right, well. <laughs> Not great. Pretty crappy. Yeah, exactly. Do you remember Yik Yak when we were in school? Yik it was Yik. the that anonymous was the, uh, Twitter. I haven't heard a yet yak reference <laughs> in forever. Okay, so when Whatever we happened to I don't know, but when we were in college, it was like a big thing. And I, I never was <laughs> on it, but I remember yeah, oh yeah. I had um this jammy pack and it was a, a fanny pack and a boom box combined into one thing. And I yeah. used to ride my bike to class, like with my jammy pack, just trying to get, you know, the campus community members on their feet. Yeah. And I got to class one day after a great rendition of like Ain't No Mountain High Enough. And Love I opened it. my phone <laughs> and I'm <laughs> looking awesome. at Yik Yak and the very first thing it says is to the girl with the boombox on Truesdale, Ooh. do less. And do I was less. mortified. Uh, that leads me into my second question yeah. of what is the most offensive or ridiculous thing that you've ever read about yourself? Let's see. Um, probably the most extreme is that I'm the biggest bust in the college football recruiting rankings era ever, which is pretty, pretty, pretty crazy. And you yeah. can debate like whether that's true or whatever. But in terms of like way up there that's that's as that's as extreme as it uh, as it gets i think but there's like the more lighthearted ones there's ones where i was like running after uh fresno state game obviously actually like 2014 and uh someone tweeted like oh max brown looks like a baby giraffe running out there oh my and, and gosh then, uh, so then my friends for the rest of college to this day actually it's still call me like the baby giraffe i feel like you have a great perspective about that has that always been the case or that's something that you've developed over the years you get uh, developed over the years you get you get numb to it a little bit i think um when you're a big recruit, you kind of know what you signed up for, so it doesn't like shock you as much as yeah. like a, the Yik Yak incident <laughs> may have, have done. Yeah. Uh, but I remember like my freshman, sophomore year, like coming into the ice bath and like mm -hmm. searching my name on Twitter and like seeing what happened. And then I realized, yo, this is like catastrophic, not catastrophic, but yeah. this is like wearing on you. I, I had a friend once tell me that I was sensitive and I was so upset by that. And That's I started, the worst, yeah. I started like yeah. crying and I'm super defensive and then I started to think about it and I was like, wait a second, I am sensitive, but I so badly didn't want to be sensitive that I thought that if I didn't acknowledge it to myself or to the world, then it, then it, it wasn't true. And then I took some time mm -hmm. and I was able to reframe it and realize that yes, I am a sensitive soul, yeah. but with that, I'm also empathetic and thoughtful and those exist in large part due to my sensitivity. So what is a piece of criticism that you've received that upon further review, you were able to see some truth in it? I remember early on in my college career, late in high school, um, people would always come be, oh, you're like too hard on yourself. And I always viewed that as, ironically enough, like Kobe sitting right there on the poster, mm -hmm. but kind of was like, nah, that's what you need to do. Like, and it was like, Max, lighten up a little bit. 
And I think as my college career wore on and some of like the uh, difficult times kind of started appearing, yeah. you realize like, hey, maybe me being hard on myself isn't always like a positive, mm -hmm. like constructive, like growth element. There, there's more to life than just kind of always like grinding away, like maybe trying to enjoy things a little bit more. Not that I didn't enjoy things, like I had fun, it was a good time, but uh, when you ask that question, that, that yeah. element sticks out. Yeah. Well, you've officially survived the first segment called What Hurts the Most. So Love it. No tears. I'm no, we're, we're good. Yeah, um, yeah. So we're moving on to the next segment called Drunk on a Plane. So Love it. Here we game. go. You get to get drunk on a plane with a celebrity. It is a six-hour flight. It's nonstop, so a lot of quality time. Love you're this. in first class. I'm going to give you option number one. You can take option number one. If you're sold oh, I get options? And, okay. and you get to get on the plane, all right? then game's over. You can pass on option number one and hear option number two, but at that oh. time, option number one is off the table. You are not flying with that individual. You can take option number two or you can pass. Kay. Once you get to option number three, there's no going back. That is the individual you are stuck on okay. a six hour hypothetical plane with them. Okay. Are you ready? Yep, I'm ready. All right. I feel there, obligated to take door three to no, let this, you have let to, this you have to game your heart. keep rolling. All right, yeah. option number one. Oh, there's folders. There's folders. It's official. official. Not sealed, though. Not yeah. sealed to make it a little easier for you. Yeah. Option Steph number... Curry, I am passing right away. Wow, yeah. please elaborate. If LeBron is in one of these folders, I'm taking it and going on the plane right now. And Not arch nemesis, <laughs> but a rival the past few years is uh, Steph Curry. Not a Warriors guy. Okay. Respect him as a player, but nah, pass. I'm passing. You have an option number two, so. Okay. Here you go. Here we go. Trade you. Mm-hmm. Option number two, celebrity. Mm -hmm. Ooh, the sheriff, Peyton Manning. Wow, good photo of him too. Ooh. This is like my favorite quarterback growing up. So the really? bar, the bar is set high. You got eight hours with Peyton Manning drunk on a plane. Yes. Whatever his drink of choice exactly. is. Exactly. First class. Ooh. If I pick him, do I get to know what three is? If you pick him, I'll show you what three is. Okay. Um, I got to go with Peyton Manning. This is the stories, the humor. Yes. Like, wow. I can uh, see the true joy coming Exactly. Oh, yeah. And I've heard that, like, he can put a few back, so I'm, uh, I'm down to, to mix it up with him on a exit row ideally wow. but uh well, yeah well congrats you're getting drunk on a plane but just uh just for fun i'll let you see who was in option number three who was three <laughs> ah, dang it she did her homework wow and i have to the give king credit. that's Victoria good that's good <laughs> she said that that's funny she said that if i put peyton second M missed opportunity <laughs> she said that if i put, put him second that <laughs> you would choose him and you did that's she good was, that's a was, good game she was directly she was spot on so that's funny i'll be flying with lebron have fun with peyton I'll, i should have known i should have known i'll let you know how it goes i have perfect six questions that i find interesting um so i'm gonna ask them uh, at the very end i'll ask you if any of those you're weirdly passionate about and want to elaborate but for the t the the initial go around you'll just kind of answer the question as it is to start off i would love <sighs> to know everybody has one but i would like to hear your fake laugh fake so, laugh like into the camera yeah go ahead go. <laughs> <laughs> that was terrible that's, that's, that's probably that's probably bad <laughs> um when do you fill up your gas tank on E, probably too close. Actually, not on E. Like, it's been on E. Uh, I'm so glad. There is something called secret gas. I guess we're on the same. Secret the gas. Sa there you go. Same, uh, secret way. gas. Um, yeah. Shoes on or off during a flight? Uh, on. That's just like, <laughs> talking about self-awareness before, that's just like, I know that if someone was next to me with, with shoes off, I'm kind of like, yo, do those, do those stink down there? <laughs> yeah. um, what do you call someone when you forget their name? For guys, probably bro, yeah. um, or just like, hey, how's it going? Uh, if you were a battle rapper, what would your stage name be? My stage name? So I'm white, so <laughs> I like play off Eminem, so like Skittle or wow. something. Is that good? That's amazing. Skittle. Um, would uh, you go to a Nickelback concert? Yes. Wow, I love that answer. Yes. Do you feel pretty passionate about any of those? Any any you know monologue you need to give? I think what. That I had to struck a chord with uh, that. Would you go to a Nickelback concert? People that know me, like I'm terrible with like song names and artists. Yes. Like I'm never the guy that's DJing. I'm all, or sometimes I'll DJ, <laughs> but I'll have like preset playlists or like yes. I'm budding off someone else's. So like I can't remember if you ask me, oh, what's your favorite Nickelback song? I was like, I got no idea. 
But when it does come on, I'm like, yo, this is solid. All and right. I'm sure I'll get some shit for this, but like, this is like, it's, it's pretty good. I am so glad you said that. One, a personal Nickelback fan, but also as a contrarian, it really bothers me that everyone hates Nickelback. Yeah, First it's like all, a thing. You don't hate Nickelback. You love hating Nickelback with everybody else. Where did it start? I don't know, and it, it breaks my heart. Yeah. Like, they're just out there singing about Just grinding away, now they're the running joke. Exactly. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, next time they come to Los Angeles, I'm gonna rally some troops. We're going to a Nickelback concert. Yeah. All right, um, tying it up here, I really want to give now you a chance to talk about some of the exciting stuff that you're doing. So, yeah. what are some of the things that you're working on currently? Yeah, so I got a bunch of irons in the fire, which is awesome. Yeah. Um, so this fall, like you you mentioned, I'm, I'll be a voice on the pre and post game mm -hmm. shows for the USC football broadcast, which kind of how that started. Last year, I started my own YouTube channel, like mm -hmm. breaking down Pac-12 football games, like kind of deeper dive, like mm -hmm. more X's and O's for the football uh, football junkies, and that kind of got some traction. Which then um, there was a, an opening this fall on the uh, the telecast, like yeah, hey, we'll give this. Max Brown guy a shot, and so that was cool. And then mm -hmm. uh, the same broadcasting stuff has led to opportunities with like Stadium, which is like a mid-tier sports mm -hmm. network. And then uh, do like I'm um, the alt uh, alternate for Sirius XM Radio for like Pac-12. Uh, but then I also work in New York um, for people that follow me or are on social. For a guy by the name of Gary Vaynerchuk, Gary mm -hmm. V, he's big yeah. on social um, on his personal content team. And what would you say, what really excites you and drives you and, and makes you wanna kinda get up every day and grind? Yeah, the, the word I always fall back on is like legacy, mm -hmm. which I know is uh, kinda super high level and broad, but I think the past five or six years has kinda showed me like from going on like the top, being on like the top of the world at like 18 to not on the bottom of the world, but like relatively speaking, kind of being on the lower end of all of that at like 22, 23. And so I think like big picture wise, like like we're all gonna die at some point. Yeah. So like, what are you leaving behind? And I think those, those elements kind of get me up in the morning, like drive me to do your own yeah. YouTube channel to then kind of have the next thing and then like make an impact, like working for a guy like Gary V who's like setting the stage for everything mm -hmm. social media that like making an impact in this yeah. world. I think those, those kind of things get me going. Yeah. And if there was one either show or platform or one thing that you could do tomorrow, what would that be? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I got asked that question a couple of weeks ago and I think ca calling a college football game on prime time would be yeah. awesome. That'd be a blast. Uh, but not even in like a foo foo way. I'm like I'm pretty like happy with where I'm yeah, at. I think my, awesome. my, my dream like growing up and for the first twenty four years of my life was uh like be a professional quarterback. Yeah. That ship kinda passed, but I don't think that means like ah oh, now like life sucks and that yeah. kind of stuff. And so in terms of like what's that dream out there, I don't know if I necessarily know that, but in terms of like right now, like I'm pretty Pretty cool doing this, chasing this, and yeah. Uh, yeah, so far so good. That's awesome. Yeah. Well, in closing, I'm gonna have you help settle a really long got? controversy in my own personal life. So yeah. I love giving gifts. It's one of my love languages. To me, yeah. the more personalized the gift, the better it is. So okay. I mean, for years I've been giving people gifts with their faces on it because I'm. Mean, what's more personal than that, <laughs> right? Anyway. Oh, yeah. I want you to settle the debate if giving people gifts with their faces on it is loving or if it's creepy. See, I think it's, I don't know if this is bad or yeah. not, but I think it's based on the price point. Mm. Like if you're doing like a white elephant, is that the term, yeah. right? Where it's like $20 and under and you're yeah. getting like a $15 pillow and then like printing the face <laughs> on, like that's a creative gift. Yeah. I love it. Like I'm keeping it, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm rolling with it. But if it's like a thing you want them to use like all yeah. the time, like we're, we want this like picture frame like front and center on the island table yeah then i think it's creepy no, i don't honestly, know i'm i'm really glad that you said that yes please on, tell me that is if that's a of, mug of the joy spreading team here yes all three of us i would like to present you yes. with your very love own this joy spreading mug love so, this uh, just hold that up to the camera every that. day when i get coffee i go between like three mugs this well, will be used all the time. Good. So, Max, thank you so much for being here. This is an absolute blast. And to all of our viewers, thank you for listening. Keep spreading joy and join us next time. Don't, don't.